Appeal subcommittee uh, hearing for October 25th is now in session. This hearing is being <coughs> conducted in accordance with the applicable provisions of the open meeting law, including the updated provisions enacted by the legislature regarding virtual hearings. The new law allows the board to continue its practice of holding virtual hearings through March 2023. This hearing of the board is being held remotely via the Zoom webinar event platform. This hearing is also being live streamed. <clears throat> In order to ensure this hearing of the board is open to the public, members of the public may access this hearing through telephone and video conferencing. The information for connecting to this hearing is listed on today's hearing agenda, which is posted on the public notices page of the city's website, boston.gov. <clears throat> members of the public will uh, enter the virtual hearing as attendees which means you will not see yourself on the screen and you will be muted throughout unless administratively unmuted when asked to comment. <clears throat> Board members, applicants, and their attorneys or representatives will participate in the hearing as panelists, and they will appear alongside the presentation materials when speaking. Panelists are strongly <coughs> encouraged to keep video on while presenting to the Board. As with our in-person meetings, comments in support will be followed by comments in opposition. The order of comments is as follows, elected officials, representatives of elected officials, and members of the public. The chair may limit the, the number of people called upon to offer comment and the time for commenting as time constraints require. For that reason, the board prefers to hear from members of the public who are most impacted by a project, that is, those individuals who live closest to the project. If you wish to comment on an appeal, <coughs> Please click the raise hand button along the bottom of your screen in the Zoom webinar platform. Click it again and your hand should go down. When the host sees your hand, you will receive a request to unmute yourself. Select yes and you should be able to talk. If you are connected to the hearing by telephone, please press star nine to raise and lower your hand. You must press star six to unmute yourself after you receive the request from the host. Those called upon the comment will be asked to state their name and address first before they provide the comment. In the interest of time and to ensure that you have enough time to do so, please raise your hand as soon as Mr. Fortune reads the address into the record. Do not raise your hand before the relevant address is called or the meeting host will not know to call on you at the appropriate time. These instructions may be repeated throughout the hearing. Today's board uh, co consists of a full board, but we're not sure if everyone is here yet. So uh, as a result, if any applicant would like to wait until a seven member board is seated, you can seek an administrative deferral. But let me take a roll call to determine how many we have today. So Mr. Fortune. Yes, good morning, Mr. Chair. Morning. Mr. Ruggiero. I believe he said he might be late. Ms. Dong. Morning, Mr. Chair. Good morning. Mr. Robinson. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Uh, Ms. Pinato. Good morning, Mr. Chair. And Ms. Logue. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Okay, so everybody's here. Mr. Ruggiero will be late, so we're all set. Uh, Mr. Hampton, are you there also for the BPDA? Uh, good morning, Mr. Chair. Good morning. Okay. Uh, um, uh, Mr. Mr. Fortune, take it away. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The first order of business is the approval of the hearing minutes of September 13th of 2022. We need a motion. So moved. Uh, <coughs> Mr. Fortune, uh, is there a second? Second, Eric. Mr. Fortune. Yes. Mr. Ruggiero. Oh, Mr. He's, he's late. Ms. Dawn. Yes. Mr. Robinson. Yes. Ms. Pinato. Yes. Uh, Ms. Loeb. Uh, I didn't hear you, but I'm in favor, so the yes, motion. Yes, sorry. Okay. <laughs> it's unmuting. Okay. Thanks, Kelly. Um, <clears throat> the motion passes. Thank you. Call the first extension, calling DOA 799-147-30 Thorn Street. Name and address for the record, please. Uh, good morning, Mr. Secretary, Mr. Chair, Attorney Nick Zazula, McDermott, Colty, and Miller, 28 State Street in Boston, here on behalf of uh, 30 Thorn LLC. Thank you, Councilor. Thank you, Councilor. In regards to 30 Thorn Street, the board originally granted this relief on November 6th of 2018 and has since granted two extensions of that relief. However, 
both extensions were necessary because COVID tolling applied for this relief. With tolling, this relief did not expire until February 23rd of 2022. However, the board's most recent extension until November 6th of 2022 covered the full tolling period. I recommend that the board confirm this for the record. The applicant now requests an additional extension until November 6th of 2023. I recommend that the board grant this extension if it's appropriate under the circumstances, keeping in mind that it would be only applicant's second necessary extension. Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion to extend the extension until, until November 6th of 2023. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Fortune? Yes. Ms. Dong? Yes. Mr. Robinson? Yes. Ms. Pignano? Yes. Ms. Loeb? Yes. Uh, and I'm in favor as well. The motion passes. Thank you. Following the next extension, calling VOA 1035883, 178 Brighton Avenue. Name and address for the record, please. Good morning. Rebecca Glickman Simon from Fitch Law Partners. The business address is 84 State Street in Boston. Thank you. Good morning, Councilor. In regards to 178 Brighton Avenue, the board originally granted this relief on November 6th of 2020, so COVID tolling does not apply to this relief. The applicant is now seeking their first one-year extension. I recommend that the board grant that extension if you find it appropriate under the circumstances. Mr. Chair, I'm going to make a motion that we do a one-year extension from today's date of um, October 25th to 2023. Second. 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 Uh, Mr. Fortune. Yes. Ms. Don. Yes. Mr. Robinson. Yes. Ms. Pinado. Yes. Ms. Lowe. Yes. Uh, and I too am in favor of the motion passes. Thank you very much. Calling the next case, calling DOA 1035609, William T. Morrissey Boulevard. Name and address for the record, please. Yes, good morning, Philip Strazula, S-T-R-A-Z-Z-U-L-A, 820 Morris Boulevard, uh, Dorchester. Thank you, sir. The, in regards to 820 William T. Morrissey Boulevard, the board originally granted this relief on November 13th of 2020. So COVID, COVID tolling does not apply to this relief. The applicant is now seeking their first one-year extension. I recommend that the board grant that extension if they find it appropriate under the circumstances. Mr. Chair, I, I will again, uh, Make a motion to approve a one-year extension from today's date of October 25th. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Fortune. Yes. Mr. Ruggiero. Oh, he's still not here. Sorry, Ms. Dong. Yes. Mr. Robinson. Yes. Ms. Pinato. Yes. Ms. Logue. Yes. And our two in favor motion passes. Thank you very much. Calling the next case, calling POA 107 2124 295 Kitteridge Street. Name and address for the record, please. Yes, Is there a Mr. Timko on? Or someone for? Hello. Okay. Yes. This is Diana Fowler and Ryan Thurman. We, uh, we're fi we filed to be able to pass the ownership of this. Uh, permit to my name and for my company. Are you are you talking about Kitteridge Street, ma'am? Yes. Okay, hold on two seconds. In regards to 295 Kitteridge Street, the board originally granted this relief on November 13th of 2020, so COVID tolling does not apply to this relief. The applicant is now seeking their first one-year extension, and I recommend that the board grant that extension under the appropriate, under the circumstances. Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion for a one-year extension from today's date of October 25th. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Fortune? Yes. Mr. Regi uh, Ms. Ms. Dong? Yes. Mr. Robinson? Yes. Ms. Pignato? Yes. Ms. Logue? Yes. Uh, motion passes. Calling the next, sorry. Calling the next case, calling VOA 810. 882 40 Harding Road. Name and address for the record, please. Good morning, sir, chair, and members of the board. Alexander Burke of 570 Hyde Park Ave, owner and applicant. Thank you, sir. Regarding 40 Harding Road, the board originally granted this relief on November 30th of 2018 and has since granted two extensions of that relief. However, both extensions were unnecessary because COVID tolling applied to this relief. 
with tolling, this relief is, did not expire until March 7th, 2022. However, the board's most recent extension until November 30th of 2022 covered the full tolling period. I recommend that the board confirm the record. The applicant now requests an additional extension of November 30th of 2023. I recommend that the board grant this extension if it's appropriate under the circumstances, keeping in mind that it will be the only applicant's second necessary extension. Mr. So Chair, I'll make a motion to extend to November 30th of 2023. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Fortune. Yes. Ms. Dong. Yes. Mr. Robinson. Yes. Ms. Pignano. Yes. Ms. Lowe. Yes. And I tune in favor of the motion passes. Calling the next case for extension, calling DOA 106 28 Monument Street. Name and address for the record, please. Is anybody on from Monument Street? There is a raised hand here. Um, Gerald, is that you? Uh, yes, hello. Um, this is Gerald Adler of 28 Monument Street, owner and applicant. Thank you, sir. Regarding 28 Monument Street, the board originally granted this relief on December 11th of 2020. So COVID tolling does not apply to this relief. The applicant is now seeking their first one-year extension. I recommend that the board grant that extension if it finds it appropriate under the circumstances. Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion for a one-year extension from today's date of October 25th. Second. Mr. Fortune. Yes. Ms. Dong. Yes. Mr. Robinson. Yes. Ms. Pignano. Yes. Ms. Logue. Yes. I too am in favor of the motion passes. Thank you. Call the, calling the next case for extension, calling BOA 658 980 10 McBride Street. Name and address for the record, please. John Moran, 130 Beach Road, Orleans, Mass. Thank you, Mr. Moran. Regarding 10 McBride Street, the board originally granted this relief on November 3rd of 2017. The board has since granted three extensions of this relief. However, the second extension was unnecessary. With COVID tolling, the first extension remained valid until February 8th of 2022. However, the board's most recent extension until November 3rd of 2022 covered the full tolling period. I recommend that the board confirm this for the record. The applicant now requests additional extension until November 3rd of 2023. I recommend that the board grant this extension if it's appropriate under the circumstances, keeping in mind there will be the only applicant's third necessary extension rather than a fourth. Mr. Moran, are we going to be able to get this project done or are we still on a holding period? I know, I know yeah. the board looks at these things and the extensions a little bit longer than normal. The, the current status is that all the necessary construction drawings, water and sewer approvals, utility approvals, PIC approvals are on the plant examiner's desk. He requires that there is slight variations in the plan that board final arbiter be sought to stamp the construction drawings. That matter is on today's agenda. Okay, if thank you, Mr. Approves, if the board approves, the uh, permit will issue. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Moran. Uh, I'll make a motion um, to uh, the extension for one year to November 3rd of 2023. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Fortune? Yes. Ms. Dong? Yes. Mr. Robinson? Yes. Ms. Pinado? Yes. Ms. Logue? Yes. And I too in favor, the motion passes. Calling the next case, calling DOA 106 6449 6 Glover Court. Name and address for the record, please. Mr. Chair, members of the board, Attorney Ryan Spitz with Adams and Moranti, business address of 168 8th Street, South Boston. Thank you, Councilor. Regarding 6 Glover Street, the board originally granted this relief on November 6th of 2020, so COVID tolling does not apply to this relief. The applicant is now seeking their first one-year extension. I recommend that the board grant the extension if it's appropriate under the circumstances. Uh, Mr. Chair, I'm going to make a motion for a one-year extension on today's date of October 25th. Second. Mr. Fortune. Yes. Ms. Dong. Yes. Mr. Robinson. Yes. Ms. Pignano. Yes. Ms. Lowe. Yes. I'm in favor of the motion passes. Great. Thank you. 
Thank you. And this is the last extension, case BOA 932-319-16 Glendale Street. Name and address for the record, please. Vernon Woodworth, 9 Elizabeth Street in, in uh, Mattapan. Thank you, sir. Regarding 16 Glendale Street, the board originally granted this relief on October 11th, 2019. So COVID tolling does not apply. Does apply, I'm sorry, does apply. With tolling, this relief remains valid until January 16th, 2023. The applicant is now seeking their first one-year extension. I recommend the board grant the extension until January 16th, 2024 if it finds it appropriate under the circumstances. Um, Mr. Woodward, in Woodworth, is this, you don't expire until January 16th of 2023? Yes, uh, however, the planning examiner apparently didn't have that information and informed us that we needed an extension. Well, do you think you need an extension beyond um, January? Uh, no, we should have the permit well before then. <laughs> We could, Mr. Chair, we could probably do a six month um, instead that of a year. Fine. That sounds okay. fine. Okay. Uh, I'll make a motion that we do a six month extension um, from January 16th, 2023. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Fortune. <clears throat> yes, so that would be July 16th of 2023, just for the record. Yes. Uh, Ms. Dong. Yes. Mr. Robinson. Yes. Ms. Pignano? Yes. Ms. Loeb? Yes. And I'm in favor. The motion passes. Thank you very much. Calling in a fourth final lobby, calling the first case, calling BZC 30745 583 Ashmont Street. There is a companion case BZC 30746 585 Ashmont Street. Name and address for the record, please. <coughs> Mr. Stefanoff on? Is anybody on for Ashmont 583 or 585 Ashmont? Here, for that project. Look, ONS is on. Can you let us know if the applicant's on? We'll come back. We'll come back to that, Madam Ambassador. Okay. Right, regarding next case, uh, case BOA 658 10 McBride Street. Final vote, board auditor. Name and address for the record, please. John Moran, Alpine Advisory Services, 130 Beach Road, Orleans, Mass. You want, uh, Mr. Moran, you want to tell us uh, why you're seeking <laughs> final arbiter? The construction drawings vary from the zoning drawings. Uh, I suggest there are slight variations. The size of the three units uh, are slightly reduced by the architects, the current architect's measurement. Uh, briefly stated, the original architect uh, did not complete the construction drawings. He uh, retired and died. Uh, this is the third architect who was able to provide uh, the construction drawings remaining within the building footprint. Uh, he reduced the elevation of the building by 31 inches in order to conform to a ADA access to the building. Uh, and reduce the number of entryways from two to one to provide greater maneuverability within the structure, uh, which then caused a variation in the window alignments. The uh, plan examiner wanted the board to stamp these construction drawings, and if the board so stamped the construction drawings, uh, he would issue the permit. Due to concerns about administrative approval, I had sought the one-year extension and hopefully the board will approve these uh, changes uh, and that the permit would issue. Okay, got it. Um, so a couple questions. The footprint of the building is unchanged, correct? Correct. And the size of the units you said was changed. Uh, is, what, is that based on the change in the entryways? Uh, no, the measurement of, of the architect, uh, there's slight reductions in the three units. Oh, it's simply the accuracy of the, me the measurements that you're talking yes. about. Okay. Uh, so, with, so the only changes are reduced elevation by 31 inches and uh, going from two entryways to one. That's correct. Right. And causing a variation in the window alignments. Okay. All right. Mr. Robinson, have you had a chance to review uh, these, these updated drawings? 
I have, and uh, it's, there's no questions for me. I think it's very straightforward. I appreciate the process that the, the applicant has had to gone through, but I think this is uh, uh, an easy one for us to uh, Okay. Approve. All right, then I'll, then I'll entertain a motion on, on that. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve. Second. All right, Mr. Fortune? Yes. Ms. Dong? Yes. Mr. Robinson? Yes. Ms. Pinato? Yes. Ms. Loeb? Yes. Uh, and I, too, am in favor. Good luck, Mr. Moran. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Mr. Chair, this is Tom. I just wanted to bring to your attention that uh, I received an email from the city's IT department saying if you have some uh, network connectivity issues. So if there are some issues with people, I just encourage them to, to hop off and hop back on and if we run into any technical issues. So hopefully, hopefully they'll be able to resolve it in the next couple of hours. Okay, we have some connect connectivity issues. Just repeating what Mr. Broom said, if you're having problems connecting, uh, jump off and then jump on and hopefully that will correct it. It's, uh, that's, we have quite an abstract uh, drawing on our screen there. It's just um, modern art, I guess. All right. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to uh, go right to the groundwater conservation then if uh, maybe the forward final auditor. Um, okay, is Mr. Stefanov still, still not there? Yeah, I'll do the groundwater and then I'll come back to the board. All right, fine. Sounds time. good. Calling the first case for GCOT, case BOA 136-7326-32 Fayette Street. This is a substantial rehabilitate the single family dwelling, construct an addition to the rear and install a groundwater recharge system. The violations Article 32, Section 4, the GCOT applicability. Name and address for the record, please. Uh, this is Dan Eldridge with Eck McNeely Architects. Um, business address is 580 Harrison Ave. in Boston. Is, is, is Mr. Simonelli on? Yes, Mr. Chairman, good morning, members of the board. Christian Simonelli, Boston Groundwater Trust, and we have both letters from the applicant. Okay. Uh, we, we also have them, Mr. Chair, as well, Secretary. Okay, can I have a motion then? Motion I'll make a approve. motion to approve. Second. <laughs> Mr. Fortune? Yes. Ms. Dong? Yes. Mr. Robinson? Yes. Ms. Pinato? Yes. Ms. Loeb? Yes. Uh, and I too in favor of the motion passes. Calling the next case to G card, calling DOA 139 1361 12 Marlborough Street. This is removing and replacing asphalt parking space. Call a new herringbone patent heated brick with three new parking spaces. The violation is Article 32. Section four, this is G-Card applicability. Name and address for the record, please. Yes, thank you. Uh, Jesse Aguilar with High Point Engineering. Uh, business address is 980 Washington Street in Dedham, Massachusetts. Okay. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Christian Seminelli, Boston Groundwater Trust, and we have both letters from the app. And we have them as well, Mr. Chair. Okay, then I entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve. I can Mr. Fortune? Yes. Ms. Dong? Yes. Mr. Robinson? Yes. Ms. Pinato? Yes. Ms. Loeb? Yes. And I am in favor also. The motion passes. Thank you very much. All right, Mr. Chair, before I call on the 930s, I don't think Mr. Steph Stefanoff is in uh, on the call, but um, I'll make a motion to defer until the November 15th meeting at 930. Okay, makes sense. I'll, I'll second that, that Eric. Sure. Um, Mr. Fortune? Yes. Uh, Ms. Dong? Yes. Mr. Robinson? Yes. Ms. Pinato? Yes. Ms. Loeb? Yes. And I'm in favor as well. Motion passes. Mr. Chair, I know we have six members, correct? Mr. We have six members, but we are due to have, I haven't heard from Mr. Ugero, uh, but he said he would Guys, I, I, I'm here. I'm okay. trying to get my computer with my camera to work, but I'm, I'm here on a little iPad mini, so. All right. Well, so we've got your audio, Mr. Ruggiero. So that counts. That's good. That's good enough. Nice to see you, or not? Not see you. Nice to hear you. Uh, Thanks. All right. So we have a seven-member board. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Joe. Um, so I'm going to call the 9:30 hearings for any deferrals or withdrawals. If you are going to defer or withdraw your 9:30 project, give me the address first, please. Okay. Calling the first case, calling VOA 136 438 Washington Street. This is to build an addition onto the existing dental office on the first floor and re relocate a wheelchair ramp. 
The violation of Article 51, Section 17, the rear yard is insufficient. And Article 51, Section 17, the flood air ratio is excessive. Name and address for the record, please. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the board, Attorney John Fulgini on behalf of the applicant, uh, Dr. Maria Vasilakis. So uh, 438 Washington Street in Brighton, the zoning here is Neighborhood Shopping 5. The lot size is 3,641 square feet. The proposal is to add a single story rear addition of approximately 250 square feet to this existing dental practice uh, with a relocation of a handicap ramp inside the garage bay. The dimensions of the addition is approximately seven by 34 feet. With me is uh, Dr. Vasilakis, who is the owner of this dental practice. Dr. Vasilakis has been practicing her dental practice from this location for nine years. Prior to that, this location has been a neighborhood dental practice for over 50 years. This added space will allow the office to have an additional interior office for the busy neighborhood dental practice. We have two violations that Mr. Fortune just read. We have a rear yard, allowed is 20 feet. We have an existing violation uh, of 11 feet um, that was just triggered by the addition in the back. FAR uh, 0.5 is allowed. Current FAR is 1.06. And this small increase will only raise that to 1.12. We went through a great community process, no objections. We have the support of the Brighton Austin Improvement State Associations, and we have also submitted nine letters of support. I'm here to answer any questions that you have. Okay, Mr. Pugini, thank you. Um, so th this is what, a three-story building and the dental office is on the first floor? That is correct. Uh, with residential above, what, what's, what? Yes, it's residential above. Okay. Um, and the, uh, the rear yard uh, violation, uh, what is it and what's required? So under, under the code, uh, 20 feet is allowed. Uh, we're at 11 feet. If you look at the plans, you can see that we have a, a structure, a, a fixed garage that is there now, so the, um, the addition of the back just triggered the violation because we're doing work in that uh, previous um, violated zone. So, that, so the rear yard insufficiency is an existing condition? Yes, because if, if you look at the plan that um, we have up right here, you'll see that the to the rear of the building, the addition is going to go to the right of the garage, what you're looking at there. So annex to the, the main structure, but the garage is affixed to the main structure. Got it. Okay. Um, all right, seems pretty straightforward. How are the drawings, Mr. Robinson? Uh, drawings are good. Uh, just one question, it, uh, just to make sure we understand. So the garage uh, doesn't look like an actual two-car garage anyway, so I assume there's no real change in the parking. Um, there's one car shown, and it seems like it only can handle one car anyway, so uh, the new ramp doesn't seem to be taken away from anything, it seems. Is that correct? Uh, that is correct, Mr. Robinson. No, no more questions for me. Thank you. All right, thanks. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Pulgini, I assume this is just, uh, the goal here is just to expand the, the, the practice and to be able to, to uh, take in more patients, is that? Exactly, uh, Mr. Ehrlich, it is just literally adding one more dental office to the interior of the building. Okay, and, and does that mean hiring an addition, additional staff as well? Uh, yes, um, we would hopefully, uh, you know, a hygienist or something like that, but also a, a dentist to work in that area. It's a growing, it's a neighborhood practice, so this is not obviously a big place. It's it's very much in a college area, um, and it has been in a, in a use of the dental practice for, you know, over 60 years. Oh, okay. All right, is there anyone here to testify either in favor or uh, in opposition? Good morning, uh, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Frank Mendoza, also in Brighton Liaison here for, from the uh, Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Uh, as always, referring to the judgment of the board, uh, but in this case, uh, we're unaware of any, uh, of any opposition from the community at this time. Uh, we've only heard uh, things of uh, support from the community, including the Brighton Austin Improvement Association, as well as from the abutters meeting. Uh, again, deferring to the judgment of the board. Thank you. Mr. Chair, okay. Secretary here. We have nine letters of support and two letters of opposition, but the opposition didn't leave a comment. Go Good ahead. morning. This is Maura McCrae from Council Braden's office. The council would like to go on record in support of this project. Thank you. Thank you. Annabella, go ahead. Mr. Chair, members of the board, Paul Sullivan for City Council on Lack Legal Clarity. The council on record support. Okay. There's talk between hearings. Uh, I'll call you out by 10.30 hearings. I'm sorry, Annabella, go ahead. Yeah. Fair members of the board from the Brighton Austin Improvement Association would like to go on record and support. Thank you. And I have no additional raised hands at the moment. Okay. 
think Mr. Chair, you're on mute. Oh, uh, is there a motion, please? I'll, I'll make a motion to approve. Um, I think with the uh, BPDA design review, just to ensure the ramp and the addition fit in there. Or... Second. I'll second. Okay. <laughs> Ms. Fortune. Yes. Ms. Dong. Yes. Mr. Robinson. Yes. Ms. Pinato. Yes. Ms. Lowe. Yes. All right, two in favor, the motion passes. Me too. Take care, everybody. Again, Mr. Ruggiero. Oh, uh, Mr. I'm Ruggiero. Back. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Mr. Ruggiero, are you in favor? Yes, sir. Okay, very good. Thank you. Calling the next two cases, calling DOA 134 4069 66 Waverly Street. There's a companion case, VOA 134 4067 62 to 64 Waverly Street. This is 66 Waverly. On parcel 637, with existing detached two family dwelling, erect a new detached three story two family dwelling with balconies and roof access and on grade parking. This will be one of two dwellings located on the same lot. The violations Article 51, Section 9, the lot area for additional dwelling units is insufficient. Article 51, Section 9, front yard is insufficient. Article 51, Section 57, two or more dwelling on the same lot. This is for 62-64 Waverly. Existing two-family dwelling located at 62-64 to share a lot with proposed two-family dwelling located at 66 Waverly and 4 Abbey Road. This will be one of two dwellings located on the same lot. The violations Article 51, Section 57, two or more dwellings located on the same lot. Name and address for the record. Uh, good morning, um, Mr. Fortune. Tim Johnson, architect, 599 East Broadway, South Boston. I'll wait for the drawings to come up. Okay. All right. Uh, this existing 7,500 square foot corner lot is in the 3F 4000 zoning subdistrict. The lot is 500 feet shy of a double lot. The lot contains an existing two family with on grade parking and existing trees to remain. We're proposing a second two family with on grade par parking and additional trees. Uh, we are utilizing the existing curb cut along Abbey Road. Access required seven parking spaces. But we're also reconfiguring the parking area to po provide additional planting and trees and the required open space for four units. The new two family contains duplex units, two bedroom each, five, 1,500 square foot average. Finally, the, board, the drawings before the board have been revised to reflect the neighborhood and civic association's concerns and comments, resulting in a decrease of zoning violations. I'll take any questions from the board. Okay, uh, do the drawing show, uh, are there any further details, elevations, renderings? Okay, good. All right, so this. Yep. Yeah, just walk us through the drawings. Yes, uh, this is the architectural site plan. You see the proposed footprint in the shaded area uh, on the corner of Abbey and uh, Waverly. Uh, the entrances for each unit, one off Abbey, one off Waverly. The entrance to the parking area is off Abbey, as I explained earlier. You can see the existing trees, which are very nice and healthy, and we're adding some additional uh, Boston Parks approved trees. Next slide, please. This is a view of the corner of Abbey and Waverly, showing the existing two family in the rear and the proposed two family in the front of the uh, image. Next slide, please. Uh, this is a view from Abbey toward Waverly, showing the rear of the uh, proposed two family. We have uh, balconies outside space for each unit. Uh, the roof will have access to proposed solar panels. And I can go through the green aspects of the project if you'd like. Next slide, please. Uh, lower level, showing an unfinished space. Next slide, please. Uh, this is the uh, ground floor. You see, we Pulled the building back two feet from the corner. Initially, we were cited for traffic vis visibility across corner. We pulled the building back. Per, per neighborhood comments, we also worked on the aesthetics of the project and the depth of the balconies. 
this shows the uh, proposed two family with the entrances off each road. Next slide, please. Second floor, the uh, master suite with an office area. As we know, offices are very uh, coveted uh, in these days. <laughs> Next slide, please. I'm sorry, that was the uh, two bedroom, uh, that was one bedroom. The master suite's on the top floor with the balcony, my apologies. Uh, the balcony depth was uh, increased uh, per the um, uh, about his comments. Uh, next what, is, what, what is the depth on the, on the balconies? Uh, five feet, clear. Okay. They were four feet. Yeah. Next slide, please. We show our uh, roof access where our heat pumps will be and future solar panels. We'll wire to provide wiring to the roof for the panels. Uh, building section showing our height, uh, 33 feet to the roof plate. The uh, uh, maximum height here is 33 feet. Next, uh, 35 feet. Next slide, please. Sorry. Another section. Next slide, please. This is the elevation off Abbey Road, showing the Abbey Road entrance with the balcony uh, on the top floor for the uh, master bedroom. Next slide, please. This is the uh, elevation off Waverly. Next slide, please. Elevation, <coughs> south elevation, and then finally, next slide, please. The rear elevation. Okay. Um, so the violations, uh, uh, first of all, what are the unit sizes? Uh, these are two bedroom units with an average unit size of 1,500 square foot, Mr. Chairman. Okay, and the violations uh, have to do with lot area and two or more dwellings on the same lot? Yes, the uh, lot area required per additional unit is 2,000. We're at 1,875, and the other is front yard. We didn't provide a mobile yard plan, um, so we're cited for front yard. We have a front yard of 14 feet along uh, Waverly and 5 feet along Abbey. Okay, and the, my, my final question has to do with the parking area. Is there, uh, you talked about leaving existing trees and adding additional ones. Is there fencing uh, with the abutting property or how is, it, how is it separated from the neighboring property? Yes, if we could uh, scroll, down, scroll up to the uh, site plan. Uh, exist, there's existing fencing. There is a, a chain link fence between the Abbey, uh, between the Waverly abutter property and then a stockade fence between uh, the property and the Abbey Street. Okay, so they're existing. Right. Uh, there, there's existing fencing that right there. All right, and the basement is just being used for utilities and storage? Utilities, storage, correct. Okay, thank you. All right, Mr. Robinson, how are the drawings? Uh, drawings are good, no, actually no questions. It's very straightforward. I think it fits in the context as well. So um, you, you sort of address most of my other questions. I do think we need to um, put a proviso on if we approve for site plan review and just make sure the parking is buffered and screened properly and some other things. But no questions on the proposal. Um, I guess we actually one question. So you do have full stairs to the roof uh, with hatches, which is kind of alludes to uh, roof decks. Were they there before and then removed? Is that what happened or? Um... Uh, no, these, uh, these, these would be uh, bulkheads with roof doors. Um, Okay, so just for mechanical access? That's correct. The existing two family are rental units. Okay. And be rental units. Um, so my client, we are not, no, just access to the um, future solar panels, which is part of the green aspects of the project. Great. Uh, no further questions. Thank you. Any questions from the board? Uh, is anyone here to testify uh, with respect to the project? Good morning, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Frank Mendoza here again, also in Brighton Liaison for the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services, deferring to the judgment of the board, but here to report that as far as community engagement process went, the applicant received a letter of support from the Austin Civic Association, which the board should have on file, as well as approval from the Brighton Austin Improvement Association with the proviso that uh, the applicant get a BPDA uh, design review. Uh, as always, deferring to the judgment of the board. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, this is Maura McCray from Councilor Braden's office. Council would like to go on record in support of this project with the prize that the applicant undergoes a BPA design review. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Annabella? 
Chairs, member of the board, Annabelle Gomes from the Brighton Austin Improvement Association, would like to go on record and support with BPDA design review with some attention to the house right now. It's really just a square. It is on a corner. Uh, so we'd like it to have a little bit more architectural and not just being, you know, a box for the family. And uh, the attention to landscaping on the corner, especially on the Abbey Road side, uh, to make sure that there is some greenery there, not just a, a five foot little uh, space between the house and the, and the sidewalk. Thank you. Tony? Good morning, Mr. <clears throat> Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Tony Tizadora representing the Austin Civic Association. Uh, we have a slight majority of members that went on record to approve this project, citing the need for housing in the uh, community. Uh, those who did oppose the project were concerned about uh, density, uh, the fact that this uh, is, will be investor-owned, uh, and the concerns about uh, the precedent setting of putting uh, more than one detached uh, dwelling on the same lot. But uh, as I said, uh, a slight majority of members did uh, vote to approve this project. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, Tim, can you give me your name and address for the record, please? I can. My name is Tim McHugh. I own 60A Wavy Street, which abuts the project. And are you in favor or opposed? I just got this notification on Saturday. I haven't had even a chance to look at the plans and how this situates my property. Um, I would like to for time look at it to kind of review it and come, would come up with a decision. Okay, thank you. And I have no additional raised hands. Okay, Mr. Johnson, just um, uh, these both uh, buildings will be rentals, is that correct? Uh, that is correct, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Okay. Is there, there is, uh, is there any, was there any discussion, I, I know, uh, in the neighborhood in particular, the issue of student housing versus uh, sort of more long-term family housing? Any discussion about that? Uh, is my client online, Tom McDonough? Uh, no, there was no, uh, Mr. Chairman, there was no discussion on whether student housing was um, liked or disliked in the neighborhood. I don't know the existing rental units, if they're students or not, uh, but they are rentals and uh, my client has taken care of this property uh, over the years, uh, shoveling the, the sidewalk, et cetera, uh, taking good care of the property. That's what I do know. Okay. Um, all right. Well, I gather it would have come up at, uh, at either the, the community organization. So, all right. Can I have a motion, please? I'll make a motion to approve. Uh, with BPDA design review for site plan and parking and buffering and also the landscape plan as it relates to um, the connection to the um, adjacent power stall and property and the corner. Second. Joe. Okay. Mr. Fortune. Yes. Mr. Udero. Yes. Ms. Dong. Yes. Mr. Robinson. Yes. Ms. Pinato. Yes. Ms. Loeb? Yes. All right, two of them in favor. And can Mr. Johnson, can uh, someone reach out to that abutter who is just learning about this and just make that connection, please? Yes, of course. We, you, you, yes, you have my word. We will uh, reach out to that butter and review the plans with him, sir. All right, thank you. Thank you. Call the next case, calling VOA 138 1690 290 Cornell Street. This is the dormer and gable and added to the third floor walk up bedroom. Reconfigure the bathroom and closet on the third floor. The violations, Article 67, Section 9, side yard is insufficient. Article 67, Section 9, the floor day ratio is excessive. Article 67, Section 9, the building height is excessive in stories. Article 67, Section 9, the front yard is insufficient. Article 67, Section 9, the rear yard is insufficient. Name and address for the record. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Bond Worthington, 110A, Inman Street, Cambridge. I'm the architect for the project. I believe Andy, uh, the, the client is also on here as well. Andy Rosen. Andy Rosen, for the record, 290 Cornell Street, Roswell Dill. Thanks for having us today. Why don't you go ahead and tell us about the project? Okay, I'll walk you through the plans. It, the, the project is a, a two dormers on the uh, uh, north and, and south of that existing house. 
on the third floor uh, to give more living space to the project it results in about 306 more square feet um, to the project. We're not changing the footprint. Um, and uh, otherwise, we're being uh, cited for some pre existing nonconformities. And um, in terms of front yard, rear yard, side yard, and um, uh, uh, floor area. Okay, so <clears throat> um, all of the, the citations, as you said, are pre existing conditions, right? Uh, That's correct. Rear, front, side. What about the height? Uh, are you pushing the roof up or is it? Uh, we are reframing the roof to give code, code head height. Uh, the average that will bring the, the peak of the roof to 34.3 to the average grade in the area. And from, from this average grade of, of the property line at Cornell Street to the mean, mean of the highest ridge is 33 and a half feet or 33.6 feet. And, and what was it before? How, how far, how, how much higher are you pushing it? It was 33.6 to the, to the, uh, I'm sorry, it was originally from the survey to the average grade to the peak was 33.3. And now, so it's pushing it a, a foot higher. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, and it's an uh, additional 300 uh, square feet, you said? Yeah, 306. Okay. All right. Um, how, are the, how are the drawings, Mr. Robinson? Uh, plans are good. I think this is really straightforward. It fits within the context. There's other dormers on the other houses. It's still below the zoning height. Uh, really see no issue with this. Um, and, and this is owner occupied? That's correct. Okay. Probably could have come before the subcommittee. But. Yeah, probably could have. Yeah. No, no questions for me. All right. Any questions from the board? Uh, is there anyone here to uh, speak on behalf or in opposition to the project? Good morning, Chair, members of the board. My name is Uja Noti with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. We hosted a meeting for this project on September 6th. And while no one was in attendance of the meeting, I did receive proof of flyering. Um, my office just received seven letters of support for the project as well, and we would like to defer judgment to the board. Thank you. The chair, I have no raised hands at the moment. Okay, Mr. Fortune, you have those letters? I do not. Okay. All right, um, can I have a motion, please? Uh, I'll make a motion to uh, approve. With no design review necessary? I don't think so. This is fairly straightforward. <laughs> okay. Is there a second? Second. Pass. Mr. Fortune? Yes. Mr. Ruggiero? Yes. Ms. Dong? Yes. Mr. Robinson? Yes. Ms. Pinado? Yes. Ms. Logue? Yes. All right, two of them in favor of the motion passes. Calling the next case, calling DOA 135 55 Boylston Street. This is a new second and third floor addition, a logic garage, in-law suite, above and in the basement, plain space below, mudroom connector, first and second floor. The violation of Article 55, Section 9, the floor area ratio is excessive. Article 55, Section 9, the front yard is insufficient. Article 55, Section 9, the side yard is insufficient. And Article 55, Section 9, the rear yard is insufficient. Name and address for the record. Chris Hosford, Helios Design Group, 116 St. Patal Street, Boston. Good morning. Can you please uh, please walk us through what uh, you're proposing? So uh, the current house is a, uh, a two-story with a single-story L in the back with a detached two-car garage. We are proposing to add a story on the two-story section, a story over the second story, one single-story section, and uh, make a connector to make an attached two-car garage <laughs> with an in-law suite above. Um, how many additional square feet are you uh, uh, what were you proposing? I believe it's about 2,200 square feet. Okay, but the number of units will stay the same? It's still a single family house. Uh, the, the, uh, the owners are originally from California. The uh, in-law suite is to allow for extended stay by family. So 
it's not parental, it's not detached, it's not, you know, it's, it's connected. Wait, I'm, a little, I'm a little confused by what you said. The owners are from California, so who lives there? They, they, live, in, they live in the house here. They're originally from California. They're permanent residents of Jamaica Plain. Oh. They want to create this in-law suite for family who live in California to come to Boston and stay for extended periods of time. Got it. So we're not talking about a potential Airbnb or anything. Yeah, like that. It, absolutely not. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I guess you want to keep scrolling through the uh, slides, uh, please, Madam Ambassador. Okay. So it, it's an additional 2,000 square feet. How, what, what's the existing? It's a pretty uh, big, big unit, big house, big home. Yeah, 21. So it's uh, existing 1654. Proposed is 3747. Okay. All right. How are the drawings, Mr. Robinson? Uh, the drawings are good. Uh, no question. I mean, I think the it is enlarging the house quite a bit, but I think it, it fits within the context still um, in terms of the sizes of the houses and, you know, the side yard issue um, is existing on sort of the right hand side and on the left hand side uh, where the garage is going and the new resident above is on a small sort of looks like an really an access alleyway of some sort called Dresden Street. So I actually think it, this is um, uh, a uh, an okay addition and, and expansion of the existing house. Um, so really no questions about it in terms of uh, the proposal from me. Okay, thank you. Can we scroll back up to the, one of the elevations? Uh, what is the exterior finish on the mudroom connectors? A little uh, we're, we're imagining glass and copper. Huh. Yeah, I'm looking at that. That's interesting. Yeah. What do you think of that, Mr. Robinson? I think it's beautiful. <laughs> uh, you know, it, they're from California, right? Yeah. It's something a little different. But I think, you know, it'll be interesting to see. I think the BPDA will, uh, will, will have a design review on this, but I think, uh, I think a contemporary con connection could be interesting between the two traditional. Yeah. Um, uh, it, it, it's a little, <laughs> a little unusual. It's nice. Um, all right. Any questions on the board? Okay, uh, is anyone here to uh, testify for or against the project? Uh, Mr. Chair, I would just know Dresden Street are, is not an alley. It's, it's a small street in Jamaica Plain. Yes, it is. Thank you. Yes. Small street, I'll read. Re, re. <laughs> you don't want to demean Dresden Street. With, with, with houses on it. It's, it's, no, no, I understand. I, I, it just meant it, there's no parking on it. It's an access. seems like a more of an access street. Yeah. I mean, the the... All the houses on Dresden Street are well within, you know, they all, none of them are conforming with front yard setback. They're all right. yeah. high feet off. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Mr. The board, Garnum, go ahead. Garnum with the Mayor's Office Neighborhood Services. At this time, the Mayor's Office would like to defer judgment to the board. Our office held a Butters meeting on August 10th, uh, where Butters in attendance expressed non opposition to the proposal. Uh, the Jamaica Plain Neighborhood Council wrote a letter recommending approval uh, for the proposal. At this time, we defer to the board. Thank you. Anybody else? We do have a few raised hands here. Yeah, members of the board. Oh, go ahead. Mr. Uh, Mr. Chair, members of the board, Paul Sullivan, City Council at large, Michael Flaherty. Uh, knowing of no known uh, opposition as well as the GPMC being in support, council can go back in support. Thank you. And then, Leighton, I sent a request to unmute you. Can you state your name and address for the record, please? Hi, hey, Leighton, are you looking to give testimony here? Yes, oh, yes. Oh, I'm okay. sorry. Mm -hmm. um, good morning. My name is Leighton Richardson. I'm calling in support of um, 49 Henry Road. And um, I'm just calling to support that um, the building of the Publishing of the barn there. It doesn't seem to me that changes the footprint of what's going to happen there. They're just trying to expand the space for um, additional housing for family members. They're not looking to rent the space and they're not even looking to expand the space beyond the, the current um, capacity. Um, so I think that's a reasonable request that should be um, affirmed by the, by the um, tenants there, the owners of that space. All right, thank you. You're welcome. 
I have no additional raised hands at the moment. Okay, yeah. can I have a motion, please? Uh, I'll make a motion uh, to approve with um, BPA design review. Uh, BPA design review. Okay. Mr. Fortune. Yes. Mr. Ruggiero. Yes. Ms. Dong. Yes. Mr. Robinson. Yes. Ms. Pignato. Yes. Ms. Loeb. Yes. Uh, I, too, am in support. The motion passes. Following the next case, calling BOA 134 4283, 1 Ralphney Road. This is an addition of living space and change of art from a single family to a two family. The violations of Article 69, Section 30.1, the building alignment conformity, Article 69, Section 8, building a two family and a 1F 9000 is forbidding. Article 69, Section 9, the fluidity ratio is excessive. Article 69, Section 9, the building height is excessive in stories. Article 69, Section 9, the usable the space is insufficient. And Article 69, Section 9, the reading ad is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. My name is Eileen Rosa from Rosa Design and Construction. Uh, I am representing the owner, Ms. Vanessa Prince, uh, who is the owner of uh, this property. Um, she has uh, lived in this property since 1966 for about 56 years and owned this property since 1987. That's about 35 years. Um, the existing, well, her intention here is to provide additional living space to uh, one of her family members that are living uh, with her in this moment. And uh, basically the existing lot size is uh, 4,882 square feet. And it contains a uh, existing two bathrooms, two bathrooms, single family home of about 1,347 square feet. The intention is to make a 13 feet by 33 feet addition with a total of 1,279 square feet, three bedrooms and 2.5 bathrooms to convert this property into a two family dwelling. Um, the floor area ratio, uh, the, the, what's allowed in the area is 0.3, the existing is 0.3 and what we are proposing is 0.3. So we're increasing the habitable Limited space from three uh, one thousand three hundred forty-seven to two thousand six hundred twenty-six uh, total square feet. Uh, the building height is excessive. Uh, we're, uh, the intention here is to blend it in with the existing building. Uh, we're proposing three stories in total, as it currently is, and the open usable space allowed in the area is eighteen hundred square feet. The existing is 2,781, and what we are proposing is 1,390 square feet. So there's a difference of about uh, 410 square feet. The rear yard allowed is 40 feet. The existing, it's nine feet on the left side. And what we are proposing with the new addition is going to be is uh, 25 feet. I'm open to any questions. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> so, um... The, the homeowner will continue to live in, in the one unit and will rent the second unit, is that the plan? Correct, well, the owner lives out and around and she's trying to move in one of her daughters on this side. Okay, okay. Um, and some of these uh, violations uh, appear to be pre-existing from the, I mean, the height, for example, is simply matching the, the existing, is that correct? Correct. Okay, um, can we scroll back to the uh, site plan, please? I'm a little, uh, uh, yeah, right there. Well, where is the uh, where is the curb cut? I see that it says existing driveway. Right, it's right to, from Stonehill Road. If you scroll up on uh, the plot plan right above, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it, but it's right on, uh, on Stonehill Road. So you'll be able to come in from this uh, road, Stonehill Road. And how wide is the, the, current, the existing curb cut? Uh, my understanding is there's not no car cut specifically, so the, the, the asphalt traffic goes straight in to the property. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, so uh, okay. So, but the entrance is um, going to be off Radney Road. Am I right? Or, 
it's a little uh, I'm just I'm just trying to sort of get a grasp on the configuration of where the driveway is into the end the front of the building right so the existing front of the building is facing Stonehill Road and the proposed addition will be facing Stonehill Road and that's where the driveway is Correct. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Chair, I'm looking at it on Google Maps. There is a driveway. There's, a, there's, there's basically definitely a curb cut. There's a massive curb cut, actually. Yeah. There um, is? Okay, my bad. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and, but, but which sounds to be the existing condition is front yard parking? Uh, it, looks yeah. Like, looks like yeah. it. Because it faced, the front door does face Stonehill Road, and that is where the curb cut is, even though seems like it could face the other road as well so but it is currently facing Stonehill with a very large corner curb cut too um, not all the way around the corner but right at a crosswalk corner so I think I guess if we're talking a little bit I think that there's maybe this should be looked at with BTD just to make sure you know this it looks like a, there are new some new paving there maybe but it's it's a little bit uh, I think it's a little it seems a little uh, kind of large for this pedestrian corner um yeah. honestly so okay. uh, but maybe this is an opportunity for us to sort of kind of tighten that up and fix that a little bit if we, if we okay. Well, you to you, improve it okay well yep. uh, you spoke exactly with my concerns so uh um, yep. so thank you anything else about the drawings that you wanted to come no i think i think in general like proposed uh addition i i don't really have a, an issue with i think uh you know the existing house is is a little bit mixed match anyways in terms of it so i think maybe a, uh, some design review just to pull the whole thing together and make sure it feels as a consistent whole i think would be good but uh really no questions on the proposal it's pretty straightforward in terms of the square footage and the unit the additional units so okay any questions on the board anyone speak for or against the proposal Good morning, Mr. Chair, members of the board. This is Danielle Fonseca with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Uh, there's no civic association in um, this area of coverage in Hyde Park, so the applicants completed the community process and they notified all of others. And I hosted a community meeting that was held on August 9th. Um, we received no letters of opposition or support for this proposal. And at this time, we'd like to defer um, judgment to the board. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, we do have one letter of opposition from the neighbor. And can, Mr. Chair, have no raised hands at the moment. Thank you. What is that letter of opposition based on, Mr. Fortune? Uh, they just opposed to the project. Okay. And no raised hands, Ms. Thomas. Thank you. Um, Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, members of the board, uh, Paul Sullivan, City Council at Large, Michael Flaherty. Uh, council just like to go on record in um, opposition. I, I believe it might be the same uh, neighbor that's opposed. We received uh, um, opposition just based upon the, uh, the size and scope of the addition. That's it. Okay, thank you. Um, I see the chat, uh, uh, counselor, there's a counselor's representative looking to speak. So, uh, oh, uh, Lucy, okay, yep, Cindy, one second. Uh, Cindy, let me just make you a panelist. And I'll unmute you. Um, you should see that. Okay, go ahead, Cindy. Oh, good morning. No, um, not as of right now. We are at 1030. So. Okay, so you're all set for now. Okay, I'm going to make you a panelist, though. That way you'll be able to unmute yourself. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, can I have a motion, please? <laughs> I, I, I'll make a motion um, to approve. I think um, with uh, uh, BPDA design review of the parking and curb cut uh, to see if we can tighten that up i also think um, some design review of the addition and the existing house to ensure that it is uh, kind of pulled together as a single i think uh, especially maybe looking at the um, entries um, the new entry and the uh, existing second uh, two-family entry i think need uh, some a little bit of work to make sure they kind of work together as well so um, that's it. is there a second Second. <clears throat> Mr. Fortune. Yes. Mr. Ruggiero. No. Ms. Dong. Yes. Mr. Robinson. Yes. Pinado. Yes. Ms. Lowe. Yes. I am also in favor of the motion passes. Thank you. 
Calling the next case, calling VOA 134 8905 120 to 124 Babson Street. This is 18 independent elderly, elderly housing plus adult daycare on ground floor. The violations Article 60, Section 8, elderly housing use is forbidden. Article 60, Section 8, the daycare center is, is a conditional use, elderly. Name and address for the record, please. <coughs> Anybody on for Babson? Okay, Fatima, I see your hands up. Do you know if the applicant's on? Hi, who are you? Um, I just spoke with um, with the applicant, and they wish you defer. Um, I found out that at what was supposed to be the abutters meetings, there was no abutters at the meeting. Uh, they never came before the council, and there wasn't one. My neighborhood council, and nothing was requested. So we set it for our next review date for November 17th and the applicant. Okay. Ma Madam, you're not, the, you're not the applicant though. We have to hear from the applicant. Okay. Yeah. All right, we're gonna go back to that one. Uh, Mr. Chair, actually it's um, 1036. I'm gonna call the 1030 hearings for any deferrals or withdrawals. So this is 1030 only for any deferrals or withdrawals. You can give me the address first if you're gonna defer. 89-91 Union Street, Mr. Secretary. Hold on a second, Councilor, hold on two seconds here. It has two companion cases, just so you know. Okay, thank you very much. Um, calling a 1030 hearing case for deferral, case BOA 1258611, Union Street. There are two companion cases, BOA 1258613, 93 Union Street and BOA 1258616, 45 Shepherd Street. Name and address for the record. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Chairman, members of the board, Attorney Jeff Drago with Drago in Toscano with the business address of Levin Beacon Street. Um, seeking a deferral and working with both the uh, Council of Braden's office as well as uh, many of the abutters were seeking a deferral to make uh, additional changes uh, and reduce the size of the project. Has, uh, it, has, it, has, it, has, it been, has this been deferred before, Mr. Drago? It is not, Mr. Chair. This is our first year. Okay. Mr. Mr. Drago, just so you know, we have, I, I don't know how long it's going to take you, but we're into 2023. We do have two open dates for December, um, but I don't know if it's going to be longer than that. I, I think if, if um, I, I think we could, I think that's fine. If we could get a December date, that would work. All right. All right, well, first we need a motion. A motion to defer. Uh, thank you. Uh, Mr. Fortune? Yes. Mr. Ruggiero? Yep. Ms. Dong? Yes. Mr. Robinson? Yes. Ms. Otto? Yes. Ms. Loeb? Yes. Uh, I'm in favor, the mo uh, motion passes me. What's the date? Uh, you'll have a date of uh, December 13th at 11.30. Thank you. Mr. Secretary, 64 Clarkwood Street. Thank you, Councilor. Hold on two seconds here. Roll back and forth on my... What was the address again, uh, Derek? 64 Clarkwood Street. Okay, for the record, calling BOA 1263740, 64 Clarkwood Street. Name and address for the record, please. Yes, good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Attorney Derek Small. Is this address of T1 Dobson Road, and we're seeking it with 464 Parkwood Street. Okay, you're seeking a deferral? That is correct. Uh, what's the reason? We are going to go back and have another meeting with the Greater Manapan Neighborhood Council. Okay, can I have a motion, please? Motion to defer. Second. Second. Mr. Fortune? Yes. Mr. Ruggiero? Yes. Ms. Dong? Yes. Mr. Robinson? Yes. Ms. Cunado? Yes. Ms. Loeb? Yes. I right, to support the motion, the motion passes. Uh, Mr. Small, you have the last date in 2022. We'll give you 1213 at 1130. Now it's to 2023. Believe it or not. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, are there any other deferrals or withdrawals for the 1030 cases? Hearing none, I'll go back to uh, 930. 
calling DOA 127168 at 199 Fuller Street. This is a driveway curb cut for five off street parking. The violation is Article 65, Section 8. The parking lot use is forbidden. Name and address for the record, please. Hi, this is Olean Griffin and my dad, John Mitchell. Um, address is 76 Moore Street. Okay, tell us uh, what you're proposing, please. My dad owns um, the 199 Fuller Street and he also owns the 76 um, Moore Street. Um, but uh, he, we're having a little bit of problem with parking over here, so he decided to do some off street parking. The plan, um, so he wanted to use the 99, the Fuller Street side as parking for the tenants here at 76 and um, his kids, pretty much. And, and I've owned the property since uh, 78, and it's every year it looks like it's getting worse and worse for a pocket. Okay, so, so what's what's on the what is the uh, the, uh, the plot used for now? There's, there's nothing. nothing on it. There's nothing on it, and there's no paving. What is it, grass or dirt? What what is paving. it? It's paving. Yes. Oh, it is paving, but it's not used for parking now. You no. Must... Okay, so there's no curb cut. So you're proposing a curb cut. Correct. Correct. Okay, and I can't quite tell from the dry how wide is the curb cut. Ten feet. Ten feet. Yeah, it's called it's called out as ten feet, Mr. Okay. Chair. <laughs> okay. Um, and what and what will the rest? So I see you've got you got one, two, three, four, five spaces proposed. What's the rest of this pit? Is the entire lot paved? No, most of it's um the wider part is grass. Okay. So the idea would be that you would come in the curb cut uh, and go to the, this existing paved area and then turn to the left and park, have five parking spaces. And the upper left-hand corner of the lot would continue to be grass. Correct. OK. All right. All right. Uh, Mr. Robinson, any thoughts on these plans? Uh, I think the, the proposal is fine. So I just want to clarify. So you also will uh, your tenants will have access from Bora, correct? Beyond. Yes. Side of the building, which is an existing, looks like an existing curb cut um, yes. and drive lane, I guess, past the three family or whatever number of units is. So, okay, <laughs> I think the only only thing we should probably do is is see if we can uh, we need to screen and buffer, obviously, yeah. parking. Um, so that will be a requirement and um, provide sort of that aspect of it. So. Um, I think there's no question on the proposal, really, except for we should just make sure it gets done right. I, I, I second Mr. Robinson's concerns with screening and buffer. Yep. Okay. So, Mr. you're Chair, uh, for, for the Griffins, you're aware that, that you know, that means landscaping, bushes, uh, trees, whatever, some some form of uh, making the the lot not look just like an empty paved. Uh, okay. Empty. Okay. All right. Very good. Mr. Uh, Chair, I don't yep. think Mr. D'Amico is on. Uh, but he did comment on this one. He says 199 Fuller Street is fine. Okay, good. All right, uh, any other questions on the board? <clears throat> uh, anyone want to testify in or against the proposal? Good morning, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Eric James of the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. The applicant for 199 Fuller Street had an abutters meeting on August 24, 2022, um, and they also met with the Dorchester Unified Neighborhood Association, um, which ultimately decided to oppose this project. Um, they cited opposition um, in regards to current lack of on-street parking spaces and the impositions and difficulties it will place on Fuller Street residents. Um, in total, we haven't received any letters of support for this or any letters of opposition besides that one for this pro property. So at this time, the mayor's office would like to defer to the judgment of the board on this matter. Thank you. Mr. James, can I ask you a question? I'm a little confused. Uh, this is would be adding parking to the area. So why was there concern about uh, it, it uh, reducing parking? Um, at this time, they didn't necessarily specify. I know that generally um, many people have concerns about congestion and they have concerns about um, the number of cars that would be added um, to a street. 
Um, as of now, I know that they said that there will be impositions and difficulties that it will place on the Fuller Street residents. I believe they, they have maybe concerns in regards to uh, congestion, but um, I do not have um, those exact answers at this moment. Okay, thank you. Uh, is there anyone else who wants to testify? Mr. Chair, I have no raised hands. Oh, sorry, one hand just popped up. And Alicia, second. Go ahead. Can you, can you state your name and address for the record, please? And Cecilia, I'm not going to give testimony here. Hi, yes. Are you able to hear me now? Yes. Yes. Hi, sorry. Uh, my name is Anacelia Cuevas. I um, live at 1382 River Street. Um, and I wanted to uh, testify that I'm in support of the project. This being um, because I live about a block away. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, can I have a motion, please? Uh, just one question to the applicant. It, it doesn't appear, or Eric James, it, it, there's no, it doesn't seem there's parking on this side of Fuller Street, uh, what it looks like to me. There's parking on the other side. So I got to no, understand. There's residential parking on Mortar Street. No, on Fuller. On Fuller. Is there? Yeah, the whole street is, is parking. Both sides? Yes. Yes. Okay, so that's where the question is coming because you're adding a curb cut, which would be taking away a street level parking. However, you're adding five spaces. So right. I just wanted to clarify that. I, I have no other questions. I think the pr proposal is fine. So I, I just want to. Right, you want to make a motion then? Yes. I'll make a motion to approve with BPA design review for screening, screening and buffering um, of the uh, off street parking area. Second. Mr. Fortune? Yes. Mr. Ruggiero? Yes. Ms. Dong? Yes. Mr. Robinson? Yes. Ms. Pinato? Yes. Ms. Lowe? Yes. And I too am in favor, the motion passes. So just make sure that you check in with the BPDA about screening and buffering. We take that pretty seriously. Thank you. All right, thank you. On the next case, calling VOA 120 8535 265 to 265 C Mino Street. This erects a new four story with private roof decks, five unit townhouse residential building with off street parking. The violation of Article 65, Section 8, <coughs> townhouse use is forbidden. Article 65, Section 9, the floor area ratio is excessive. Article 65, Section 9, the building head is excessive in stories. Article 65, Section 9, the building head is excessive in feet. Article 65, Section 9, the front yard is insufficient, and Article 65, Section 9, the side yard is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Attorney John Fulgini, uh, 10 Ford Grown and Braintree. Uh, with me this morning is James Christopher on the architectural team, together with Martin Kerr and John Doherty, who are the owners and developers of this proposal. So, <clears throat> excuse me, 265 Minor Street in Dorchester, the zoning in this neighborhood is 2F6000. This lot size is 7,478 square feet. The proposal is to build a new three-story residential building with five condominium units and six parking spaces totally contained in the building. The internal parking is assessed on the left side of the building through a shared driveway with 269, 271 Minot Street. The violation is multifamily in 2F zone. FARs of 0.4 is allowed, we're at 0.86. Building height is 35 feet, we are at 39 feet. Building stories is two and a half, we're at three. Front yard is 15, we're at 10. Side yard is 10, we're at 4.6 on the right and 110 on the left, and that is the area that focuses with the shared driveway. Other than that, we comply with all dimension requirements, including parking and open space. The building program, I'll just go through that quickly. Unit one is 1,238 square feet. It is two bedrooms. Unit two is 1,210 square feet. That is also two bedrooms. Unit three is 841 square feet, two beds. Unit four, 841 square feet, two beds. And unit five is 1,248 square foot. That is four beds. Unit one and four are bi-level units and unit five is a flat unit. Units three, four, and five shall have small roof decks which is step back and are specific to those units accessed through a hatch. And in closing, we went through a lengthy community process. And based upon that, we had reduced the type. We were originally at townhouses. The neighborhood didn't want that. We changed the design and shrunk the building 
and we provided the board 30 letters of support. Any questions? Okay, so this is five units in a 2F 2000 uh, district, is that correct? Uh, 2F 6000, correct. 6, 2F 6000, I'm sorry. Um, okay, so we are, we're packing it in here, I can see. Um, but to that point, we do have, the, it's a very irregular shaped lot, Mr. Um, Ehrlich, and if you look at, we don't have any uh, open space violations. There's a lot of green space. The people that lived in the rear would like a big buffer, and there's a significant, you'll see on the plans, amount of green space associated with this proposal. Okay. Um, yeah, keep, okay. And, uh, <clears throat> and uh, tell us about the parking again. There's a parking access um, on the left side of the building, and it is internal inside the building. Okay. Six spaces, Mr. Ellen. Six spaces. Yeah. Thank six spaces. you. Okay. Uh, all right. Can you keep scrolling down, please? All right, Mr. Robinson, how are, how are the drawings? Um, I think the drawings are, are fine. Uh, you know, I do, it does feel tight. Uh, I'll be honest, it's tight. I mean, it is tight on the shared side, but the lot is obviously irregularly shaped. So, uh, you know, I think it's tight again on um, 257 side, which is the right-hand side. Um, but I, you know, it, it feels a little tight, I'll be honest, but I, I'm not sure if there's much we can do and, and due to the shape of the lot, I mean, I think that seems like they're trying to step the building as it moves back to sort of keep some um, sort of relief on the right-hand side. I'm not as worried about the left hand with the drive, the share drive, which will remain then. So, uh, you know, I think it's it's a little tight, but other than that, I think the program's fine. And, uh, and what's your sense about the design context? I mean, I think it, it is a little bit further forward. I, I'd be interested about the front yard, um, you know, it, the, the houses seem a little bit like all over the place. One, the one next to it's turned against the street. So it is a little bit pulled forward as well. Um, in terms of the aesthetics, I think that um, you know, it, it sort of matches some of the stuff around, but it's all kind of a mismatch anyways. But um, so I'm not sure if I have a, a strong opinion either way. I do have one question on the roof deck access. You're showing spiral stairs. Um, is that with hatches or how, how are you going? With hatches. Yeah, okay. So there's no head houses for that? No head houses. Okay. And Mr. Robbins, we certainly have room to recite the building to the rear. Uh, yeah. Have, in an earlier iteration, we had it moved forward, um, and we have plenty of room with the retaining walls. It, it, yeah. The grade does increase dramatically at the rear, but we can- I can see, yeah. 